Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here, back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory, the third video of the day. So if you missed the first two, be sure to go ahead and check them out. In the first video, we went through Triple Threat online and offline. Of course, yesterday we got loads of new rewards, including a Galaxy Opal Dan Isel in the vault right there, which is very, very cool. And in the second video, went into a game of My Team Unlimited with the Galaxy Opal KD to give him a good old showcase. And we really did. He absolutely balled out. So be sure to go ahead and check out that gameplay. So for today, we're going to be talking about Spotlight Sim. And I've finally completed my first one. I know it's taken me like three days. I think they came out on Wednesday. I think it's taken me three days or two days, which I know is slow compared to everyone else. But um, yeah, it's just the best I could do. So we're going to get our first player into the squad today. And then we're also going to be going through the rest of the players and doing a top five list and then also the two best players per position. So we'll be able to give you guys a little bit of an opportunity to build a squad if you only want to use these reward cards or if they're the best cards that you can actually get. They'll give you a starting five and a backup five for each position. So the limited time event today is still really good guys. If you haven't got on this, be sure to do get to go out worse. Be sure to get on it. Uh, two chances to open the vault after every win. Now, I played one game in the video earlier on today, and we got the vault to open both times, and in the second time it opened up, we got the diamond consumables pack. So that was a massive W. We got the diamond uh, contract out of that, which is, of course, like 15k. So I can't complain at all. So definitely go ahead and make sure you're playing during those time slots right there. Other than that, we moved down here to the Spotlight Sim, and like I said, we completed our first one, which was, of course, the Atlanta Hawks for the diamond cam reddish. Challenges themselves aren't hard at all. Uh, they literally like use three players, four players, five players, and get ten rebounds. Six players, and then the final one is ten players, and that is for six tokens. So we're at 150 tokens at the moment, which isn't actually that bad. We've actually been earning quite a few tokens lately, and we're over 800k as well, which is just absolutely obscene. And speaking of empty, I think we've got some more to actually cash in if we come down here, and we do. So Lamar Odom with his diamond contract. Sold for 29k, which I think is a really good price because, of course, we've got someone like Danny Manning that we picked up earlier, and he sells for, or he is a very, very similar card. And we've got a lot more of these shacks that have sold for nearly 4k, which is, again, a massive, massive bit of profit on him. So we've only got a couple of things left, two more shacks left to sell, and then a couple of our legacy boys. And then other than that, it is just Thon, Makers, Solomon Hill, and uh, you can get up for 900 and Bojan, you can get up for 900 as well. Hopefully they'll sell. And then, yeah, we've got this diamond contract, which we'll go ahead and list up right now, see if we can get a little bit more MT for this. They did go up in price massively when the uh, token update came about, but they have uh, kind of come down a little bit now. So about 15K, which I'm still not going to complain about because that was a game of triple threat offline. We managed to get 15K for that. So that is a very, very big W. So we'll put it up for 15,100. Good stuff. So the first player we got, obviously, as you just saw, is the Diamond Cam Reddish. I have heard such good things about this card. It is ridiculous. So 6 for 8 comes in with 19 Hall of Fame badges and 27 gold badges. He comes in with Catch and Shoot. He has got Range Extender, Deadeye, Quick First Step, Clamps, Intimidator as well, which is mad. And then Gold Badges, he's got Defensive Leader. He has got Consistent Finisher, Contact Finisher. We've got Diamond, Giant Slayer. Angle Breaker, Corner Specialist, Quick Draw, and then Hot Start and Hot Zone Hunter as well. And in terms of his stats, 92 driving out with a 95 driving dunk, 88 mid-range with a nice 2 three-pointer, 90 ball control, 95 perimeter D, 95 steel, and 95 speed. That is genuinely unbelievable. So we will compare him to our Brandon Roy that we have sitting right here. And let's see how dissimilar these guys are in stats. Obviously, Brandon Roy has a post game, but realistically, how often do I go to the post with my shooting guard? Not very often. He's got a little bit on the driving out, a little bit on the driving dunk, and then he's obviously got a plus eight on the mid-range. Passing is very similar. Defensively is, uh, well, it's similar apart from the interior and the block. Rebounding goes to Brandon Roy, and then speed is very, very similar. But if we compared Cam Reddish to a diamond card, if we compared him to RJ Barrett, actually, that's probably going to be a pretty good comparison. So these two, six for seven first, six for eight. Again, RJ has a post game, but that's not really that important. Very similar elsewhere. Very similar. A rebounding goes to RJ and then very similar. So Cam Reddish for a free card, you really can't co go wrong with him at all. Is he going to make it into my squad? Realistically, no, because my squad is so damn good. Um, but we'll definitely try and uh, get a B team going and get him involved in that. Of course, if you missed yesterday, go ahead and check it out. We packed this Galaxy Opal Derek Rose. I didn't buy him. We actually managed to pack him from a free pack. So that was an absolute madness. But other than that, yeah, the squad is in such a good shape that... Uh, yeah, it really is going to take someone special to actually break into this lineup. I'm not even sure that the Galaxy Opal James Harden would get in, especially now we've got uh, Brandon Roy, Ben Simmons, Derek Rose, Zach Levine. 
yeah, it's going to be hard for him to get into this squad. But um, anyway, let's talk about the next spotlight sets and the next ones I'm going to be doing. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be the Cavs for Kevin Porter Jr. Now, I'm not really going for any specific uh, positions. I'm just going for the players I think are the best ones. So if we're going to go per position, let me just go through these for you guys. So the point guard position, you're going to be wanting to go for Malcolm Brogdon first because that guy is an absolute god. Where is Malcolm Brogdon? He is over here. This card... At uh, six foot five, I believe, at the point guard position, really, really solid. We're talking Hall of Fame clamps, quick first step, 90s in pretty much every important stat. He is incredible, and he can easily be your guys' starting point guard. So, if you're looking for a point guard, Malcolm Brogdon is the guy to get. The next point guard position I would recommend is going to be Dejounte Murray from the Spurs. He is also coming in as a really, really nice card. I believe he's six foot five as well. Uh, very similar to Brogdon, but I think Brogdon just has the better badges and a few extra stats. But both of those cars at the point guard positions are so, so damn good. And before we get into any others, I mean, I have to say, like, all of these cards are very, very good. None of them are really, like, unusable. The only card that doesn't have, like, clamps is, sadly, Terence Ross. Uh, so his card is pretty much unusable for competitive play and definitely going into my team unlimited. You definitely don't want to be doing that. But other than that, that card is obviously fantastic. It's just how it is this year that that clamps badge is so, so important. So if the card doesn't have it, sadly, he's not going to be making any good teams. Right, shooting goal position. We are going to go with Beasley. Where is he going to be? He is going to be the other end, I think. Let's go back. Okay, I really should know who these players play for, but I just forget because there's so many to go through. Uh, and we are looking for Michael Beasley. Where are you at? There he is. It's not even Michael, it's Malik. I've, we've got the pink diamond Michael Beasley in our squad, but this is Malik Beasley. Uh, and he comes in really, really damn nice at that shooting guard position. So if you're looking for a starting shooting guard, I would definitely recommend going for this guy. And I'm going off this uh, as primary positions. Obviously, I know the Cam Reddish we just picked up can play shooting guard, but he's starting to move forward. So we are just going to do it on their base primary positions. I'll say Malik Beasley is going to be the best shooting guard out of the bunch. And then the next one is going to be way back at the front. And it is going to be from the 76ers, Matisse Thibault, who comes in again looking really damn nice. The small forwards positions already clocked them. Cam Reddish and then Kevin Porter Jr., both of them really really top top tier cards and they can easily get into anyone's squad uh maybe not mine but <laughs> anyone else's we can probably get into the power forward position we are going to come in with brandon clark from the grizzlies right there a really solid card i think he's got either hall of fame quick first step or gold quick first step really high speed really good ball uh, control as well uh, and a decent speed with ball as well so this card very very good very very cheesy at six foot eight i believe he is and then the backup uh, power forward is going to be Rui hatchamore all the way at the end for the wizards and he is such a good all-rounder card i think he has the majority of the stats over 80 and he's got a couple of stats around the 90 mark and he's obviously got really good hall of fame badges as well and then the center position is going to be who's going to be jackson hayes of course who comes in over here from the Pels. Jackson Hayes comes in, gold quick first step on a seven foot center. So you already know he's going to be really damn nice and really damn cheesy. And then he's got really, really good speed as well. I think he's got a little bit of, little bit of ball control and uh, really, really good shooting stats as well. So Jackson Hayes at that starting center role. And at the backup center position is going to be Mitchell Robinson. Now, JaVale McGree, I've heard good things of, but I do think Mitchell Robinson, he comes in again with quick first step and defensively, is one of the best cards you can have. We're talking like 95s on the defensive end. All of the Hall of Fame defensive badges, pretty much. Uh, and he's just an absolute god. Now, if you're not looking for per positions, if you're just looking for a top five, my top five would be Cam Reddish, Kevin Porter Jr., Malcolm Brogdon, then it would be Brandon Clark, and then Jackson Hayes. I think those top five players are so good. Uh, you can argue for some other cards, obviously. Other ones are very good. Even Bledsoe is very good, and we didn't even mention him. But it just goes to show how well 2K did it with this set. Now, of course, if you do all of those guys, you are going to go ahead and pick up two pink diamonds. Are these two guys really, really elite? I'm not going to say yes. They're not. No, I'm going to say no. They're not really elite, elite cards. They're going to be good, obviously. But I don't think they're going to be fantastic. And obviously, at the very end of it, you're going to get a Galaxy Opal James Harden, who is incredible hall of fame clamps on a james harden card which you already know is going to be incredible offensively is definitely a card that is worth doing so in terms of my plans like i said i'm not going to be planning to get them all done to begin with but adding an extra galaxy opal to the club for free i'm definitely not going to complain at that um i don't think i'm going to do it per conference either i think i am just going to play uh pick and choose the cards that i want to get 
do a couple of gameplays with them and uh, then maybe just fill out the rest of the cards as and when I see fit. Now, one thing just to get, give you guys a little bit of advice, you don't need to have just NBA Series 2 cards for these sim sets. You can make up 10 cards from any set. So it can be from current NBA, Series 2, heat checks, moments, rewards cards, premium sets. It can be from anywhere. It can be from the token market over here. It could be from anywhere, so don't go paying too much because I know that the heat, the Hawks heat check sets are still so expensive because people, for some reason, think you need them. They've come down a little bit. They're down at 3.5k now, but in those first couple of days, these cards were selling for like 7, 8k, which is a madness. So we cashed out exactly the right time. Uh, but yeah, don't think you need to go ahead and spend a ridiculous amount to get the cards. All right, so sadly, these guys have not sold, so Mark Price again didn't sell, and neither did the Sydney Moncrief, so we're going to have a quick look at their price uh, so Sidney Moncrief comes in he's around 30k he's not he's like 27k and that 27k is it's 25k there that sucks uh, Mark Price comes in at if he's 30k I'm pretty sure I put him up for 25 <laughs> okay yeah I would have put him up for 25 and he didn't sell damn that sucks these guys are so cheap it's like the token market has been completely forgotten about already and that's just because they keep releasing such good cards in these new sets and obviously all these free cards that have just come out people don't really have the need to lock in collections and i don't blame them you don't really need to obviously at the position we're in at the moment with 850k uh, and this squad as our starting lineup it is a joke and of course in the actual club itself we've got so many more pink diamonds down here we've got people like paul Millsap, d wade as well these two are top top tier cards jan's like russell's not bad his jump shot is a little bit iffy michael beasley is a top tier card Paul Zingis, very, very solid. Pink Diamond Jeremy Lin, I love that card. Baron Davis, a little bit outdated at this point in time. And then gold cards, gold cards, diamond cards. Jay Williams, really good. Michael Ray Richardson, Zion. Uh, obviously, the Cam Reddish right there. Gerald Wallace, some fantastic, some fantastic cards. So, we're going to jump into a game of Triple Threat Online with our new squad. So, of course, you see, this is what I was using for Triple Threat Offline. This is not what I go into Triple Threat Online with. That would be a, a recipe for disaster. So we're going to go ahead and find our main man, Cam Reddish. We'll bring in Kareem with us, and we'll also bring in KD as well. But Cam Reddish, let's see what he's going to be able to do in this game. So we have found an opponent. What team is he going to be running with? Of course, in the first video today, we had some really, really bad matchmaking. But this seems pretty, well, I'm going to say still not fair, is it? Two diamonds and then a pink diamond buddy healed, who is a very, very good card. But I mean, yeah, who's going to guard Kareem out of that lot? Not too sure. It uh, looks like Buddy will probably be on cam. So Buddy is a very, very good defender. Why have you got white jerseys as your away jersey? That makes absolutely no sense. He takes three, Buddy Hill starts this off. And he's going to get it to go. Just so I couldn't really see who is who. This is ridiculous. Why have you done this? What an absolute idiot you are. But anyway, Cam Reddish is going to come down here. His crossover is a little bit annoying because he does have that hezzy move before he gets into it. But he's nice and quick and he's going to go straight to the rim and get the first bucket of this game. This guy is such an idiot coming in with these jerseys. Really, really annoying. And it is really hard to actually see. That's not a good shot. Good contest from Cam Reddish. And Cam Reddish is going to go over here for his first moving shot of the game. And he's going to green light it. Very nice indeed. Now, I do think he has the same release as Tracy McGregor. I think I've been told that that is a very good shot contest right there again from Cam He's gonna take his first three. It's a moving three and he's gonna hit it Cam Reddish Starting off absolutely killing it again. Let's just get up on this buddy healed It looks like he only wants to take threes, which is fine uh, And again, what's happened just there? I don't know, but he's passed it straight to me back to Cam Reddish And we're gonna go all the way up to KD with a little delicate alley-oop right there Why not? I did expect him to th slam that one down but he didn't want to. He wanted to be a little bit gentle on that. But Cam Reddish coming in, absolutely killing it. That is, again, good defense. He's bricked another shot. Did that go through the rim? That looked weird. I don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah, it still counts. Behind the back is very nice. And I think we just got an ankle breaker animation. We did. <laughs> he goes ahead and knocks down the layup. Okay, so we just broke some ankles with a behind the back. That is really nice. His behind the back, like I said, is really good. It's just a shame that his crossover is a little bit slow. Uh, it just doesn't get into it straight away. A couple of players do have that same animation. And Cam Reddish for three. Again, he's hit another three. Cam Reddish with 12 points. Perfect from the floor to begin with. He gets... Oh, he doesn't get the steal. He gets absolutely mugged off right there. That sucks. Uh, and he does come inside with Derek Jones Jr. Fair enough. He gets the open shot with Buddy. And he's going to get that one to go. Cam Reddish, can you keep up this perfect scoring routine? I'll be very, very impressed if you can. Again, get into that slow animation. Snatching that one back for three. It's a full white bounce back. He's going to break that one. Kareem gets him another chance. So it is another full white. He breaks it again. Another chance for Cam. He's jumped at us. It's another full white. And we're going to knock that one down. And he gets the sharp shooting takeover. Fantastic. So a couple of bricks there. But whatever. We're not going to make every shot 
out here, but we do now have his takeover. Look at that defensive effort as well. Absolutely smothering that pink diamond. Buddy healed. Okay, let's see if we can get something else to go. Buddy healed is now cold, uh, and this guy looks like he is resorting to off falling because he just cannot cannot maintain uh, just how good Cam Reddish is. We've got Kareem over in the corner. I thought he would come over to uh, like contest me, but he didn't. He just let me open, and Cam Reddish cuts perfectly to the rim for this score right there. It doesn't matter if he hits that, which he isn't even going to. because We only need one more bucket to get the dub. I see you, Cam, to end the game on a green light. Psych, let's end it on a full white. <laughs> he goes ahead and knocks that one down. Cam Reddish looking really damn nice from that first impressions. He feels really good. His jump shot feels nice and smooth. Like I said, a lot of comparisons to Tracy McGrady I have heard. And of course, I've used that Pink Diamond T-Mac a lot this year. And I can definitely see why those comparisons have come about. His uh, body shape, his player model seems very, very similar. Obviously, they are both the same height. Driving-wise, animations feel good. Like I said, his, his crossover is not the best, but it is still a good behind the back. So we'll see if we can get a pack here, and then we'll jump into another game. All right, cool. We do actually manage to get a pack out of that one, and we do get the Spotlight Dwight Howe pack. Not bad at all. Now, of course, Pink Diamond Richie Guerin, Guerin, whatever his name is, the old guy. Pink Diamond Richie is on the Triple Threat online boards at the moment. Of course, we got really lucky in the last week, and we got Pink Diamond Marcus Camby off of the Triple Threat online boards. So, fingers crossed we can also pick up that Pink Diamond Richie, because I think his stats are very, very good. Last year, he had a Diamond card, which was super nice, and a lot of people used him for quite a long time. So, if this Pink Diamond one plays anywhere near that Diamond one, it's going to be a very good card. And of course, for a free card, you really can't complain. This opponent comes in with a much better squad. Pink Diamond AD is a very good card. New Galaxy Opal Carmelo, which costs about 450k at the moment. And then the Rewards Diamond Zion Williamson, who is, of course, also a very, very good team. So, very good team, very good player. So, it's a very good team. At least we can differentiate our jerseys right here, which is good. So, that's nice to see. Uh, and let's go with Cam Reddish again. That crossover, it's a little bit of a shame. It is so slow. We're going to drive inside here, get him up in the air. We do get fouled, um, but sadly, we don't actually get the bucket. So, we're just going to drive this one inside. He oh. Okay, so let's go for a behind the back right here uh, against Zion, and it absolutely destroys him, and we should have a step on him. We don't. We do get stopped, but KD, thankfully, with the rebound over. To, oh, okay, so I think this guy knows I'm doing a gameplay on Cam Reddish. I'm not sure about this, but he's leaving Kareem wide open for three, and Kareem is going to green like that one. You can't leave Kareem open. You can't leave him open. I've got a three-point shoot on this guy. Do you not know? Uh, yeah, and obviously he's got a good three-pointer anyway. But let's go ahead and uh, see if we can stop this mellow, who does feel very, very damn quick. That's a pretty good shot contest, and Cam Reddish gets a rebound. Now, rebounding is one of the things he is pretty weak at. Cam Reddish for three from deep. He's bricked it, but KD with the board. Get it back out to him for another one, and that one is going to be green lights. Okay, good stuff from Cam Reddish right there. The other one, I think, might have been a little bit deep. Oh, we're very close to getting a steal there. Sadly, we don't get it. I can't switch my players, which is a big problem. Couldn't switch my players on that possession. It's whatever. Uh, we've still got a little bit of lead in this one. But yeah, behind the back for Cam Reddish is very, very nice. He's not guarding his man, and we get the easy bucket with KD. So Cam Reddish coming in, doing a little bit of everything so far in this game. And uh, shooting-wise, I've got to say, his release is really, really damn nice. Okay, let's try and get this guy lost in a screen. Doesn't look like he's actually playing on ball, which is a shame. Kareem is going to get stopped by, I don't know who it was, but out to, oh, it's a full white glitch. That sucks. I think it was anyway. It might have just been a bad release. I don't know. Um, but that kind of sucks. But Cam Reddish gets a steal right there. Hall of Fame interceptor popping up very nicely. And then that behind the back, really nice. Again, you're leaving Kareem wide open. What are you doing? I'll greet like that all day, my friend. And we get the steal right there. Thank you very much. We'll give that over to Cam Reddish. And yeah, Zion is obviously a very, very good defender. Very similar matchups, to be fair. Six foot eight of us, six foot six. He is on balling, which is nice to see. And look at the speed of Cam Reddish. And he's just got a wide open run to the rim with the acrobatic dunk right there. This card is a lot of fun, that is for sure. I can just say this card is fun. At the end of the day, I'm not too fussed about winning all the time. I do just want to have fun. That is really, really bad shot right there. What are you doing, my guy? Cream gets a board out to Cam Reddish. I see you, KD. Oh, but sadly, Carmelo saw it as well. That sucks. Wow. 35% contested from Galaxy Opal Kareem. And he's got ahead and knocked that one down. Fair enough. You can't really argue with that. Again, really nice speed. I do want him to play on ball just a little bit more so I can get a couple more step back threes or snatch back threes going. And he green lights that one. He's got Hall of Fame Green Machine, which is a very, very important badge, I have to say. You really do notice that badge. This guy's just tried to do what I just did to him, and it has not worked at all, has it, my friend? Go inside to KD. We'll get an easy bucket right there. Very nice. And Cam Reddish is doing a little bit of everything out here. We only need one more three to win it. He gets another steal. Are you kidding me? Cam Reddish for game. And he goes ahead and knocks it down on the full white. 
Cam Reddish, this card is so fun. Let's see if we can see a pink diamond on this board. And sadly, we don't see any pink diamonds, but we do have three tokens or two tokens that we're pretty much guaranteed to get because we've only got that one ball drop. So we'll get this token uh, and then we'll get on to some comments from yesterday's videos. And we do indeed go ahead and get the three tokens. Really nice. The boards haven't been too bad lately, to be fair. Very happy with that. And that puts us nearly at 150 uh, tokens. And we've got that Spotlight Dwight Howard pack to open up. So we'll see if we get anything out of this. Can't even remember who is in the set. And to be fair, I know my pack luck is now done for the rest of the year after yesterday and packing a Galaxy Oval, that is for sure. So let's jump into some comments. Has anything else sold actually? No, it hasn't. So let's jump into some comments. So... First up, we'll say, he says, Magic or Giannis? I assume you mean the Galaxy Opal Magic against the Pink Diamond Giannis. I would say Galaxy Opal Magic. I think that card is just absolutely ridiculous. Next up, two comments about Danny Manning. Jade Goat is buying 15 Mannings for 5k, a good investment. And Jake says, got Manning for 6k. I would say if you get him for 5k, I think that is a very, very good investment. He is such a good card. Got a really nice release. There's not many cards that are similar to him other than like Hidu Turklu and Lamar Odom in terms of his height and the speed he has and the Hall of Fame quick first step at 6 foot 10. So I definitely think he is a very, very good investment. I can easily, easily see this card going back up, or not back up, but up to the 10k mark. All right, next up, Nick says, I invested in 15 DiVincenzos. How much time do you think it will take to go up in price? By the way, in my opinion, the best budget squad on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed. I think it will take a, a good couple of weeks. Obviously, they're going to stay dirt cheap while they're still in packs, and they're in packs for another week. So I'd say maybe two or three weeks down the line, he will start to climb up in price, probably up to that three, 4,000 MT mark. Next up, Jade Goat, when is the next game against DBG? So it'll definitely be happening in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Obviously, everyone is on like quarantine and lockdown at the moment, so self-isolating and all that. So we're going to have a lot more time to play against each other, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we will manage to get a game. Next up, Fortnite Trollers, I have a question. Is Larry Markham better than Thor Maker? How do I do the last challenge of the James Harden spotlights? I'm absolutely struggling. I haven't even got Larry Markham in over five tries. So all you need, my friend, is the Quick Through SCS play, which is from the Nets playbook. So this is a squad that I used uh, in the final game of the Hawks one. Literally, D'Angelo Russell, Tom Chambers, and Mark Solk. So I'm evoing both of these guys, and then just D'Angelo Russell there to give the Hall of Fame floor general boost. That's the only reason I've got these three guys, and obviously have 10 Hawks players in the rest of the squad. And all you need is this Nets playbook, and then run the Quick Through SCS play. And on the defensive end, just off all your centre, uh, and you get the win pretty easy. I think I won by like 20 or 25 points, something like that. So you will get there eventually. And then is Larry Markin better than Thorn Maker? I'm going to say no. I think that Thorn Maker is very, very good. And I don't think Larry Markin is too incredible uh, from what I can remember looking at his stats. Salty Melon, I've invested in the new rubies, got them for 850 MT. Is it a good investment? 100% because you literally can't lose MT. It can discard them for 800, so very, very good investment. Next up, Shivan also talking about investments. Should I invest in Danny, Man Danny Manning, Jay Williams, or Jarrett Culver? If I had to choose one of them for you to invest in, I'll probably say Danny Manning, uh, just because I think he's got the most potential to go up in price. And then Dash 2K has a very similar suggestion to what I just said. Danny Manning is very similar to Lamar Odom, but way cheaper. Surely he goes up to at least 20, 15 to 20k when, he, when he's out of packs. I can definitely see him going up to 10k. I'm not sure if we'll go up to 15k, but like I said, I think he's got the most potential to go up in price. Next up, Marcus says, I have 30k MT and I need a new center. Who should I go for? I would say go for the Diamond DeAndre Ayton. I think even at this stage of the game, he is so good for the price that he is. Next up, we have got uh, my guy Bobby, who says, are you going to lock in Prime Series 2 or not? And I definitely will be. I mean, we're up 850k already, and we've already got all four of these players ready to go. So we're going to be easily able to afford it, it depending on who it is. If it's not someone I want to lock in for, then obviously I won't, and I probably will go ahead and just sell off these guys, probably keep KD, but probably sell off the rest of them. Um, but if it is someone good or half decent, then definitely, definitely going to be locking them in. Next up, Donald Fowler says, Bam Adebayo, Odin or Leitner? I would say, oh, that's a tough one. I was going to say Bam, Odin, then Leitner. So basically the, the, <laughs> the order that I just read out of that comment, I'd say Bam is still the better one out of the three. Odin is fantastic and Leitner is just a little bit slow in my opinion. David comes in and says, Ilse, is there... David comes in and says, is Ralph Sampson going to go up or down in price? Well, at the moment, he is just going to keep on coming down. So yesterday, he was up at like 70k. Today, he's at like 60k. I can see him coming down to about 50k by tomorrow or throughout the week. He's only, he will go up in price when he comes out of packs because it is a 7 foot 4 centre who can stretch the floor. But for me, he's not that great because, yeah, lateral quickness of 68, that is nasty. He doesn't really have a driving layup either. That's at like 60 so this card will be frustrating, but defensively it's going to be fantastic. So I can see him going up in price after the packs come out, but until then he is just going to keep going down. Next up, Hall of Fame Limitless. Should I sell or keep my Opal AK-47? Let's have a look at what he is selling for 
at the moment. I'd say hold on to him. Hold on to him. He's so damn good. I don't think there's any point in cashing in 200k for him. Similar situation as to why I'm keeping this Galaxy Open Derek Rose. 200k, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's worth waiting until their prices do go up a little bit in the future. Next up, Tobias. I bought point guard Ben Simmons for 510k and a pink diamond Porzingis for 110k. How much do you think they'll go up when the mystery player is released? It completely depends how good that mystery player is. If it is a three-point shooting, speed-boosting Shaq, oh, I mean, that's just going to cause an absolute madness. And it also depends on who this final mystery player is here. I can easily see these two guys going up to 200k. I can easily see Ben Simmons going up to 700-ish k. KD 700-ish k as well. So I think this whole set in total will probably cost about 2 million MT to lock in. And I think the prices of each card will add up to be that 2 million MT mark. Especially, like I said, if it is a Galaxy Opal. 3 point shooting speed boosting Shaq, which I do think it might be. Next up, Chimpy says, I need a new centre. I'm getting Hayes and probably McGee when the prices come down for all of the cards. I have 50k and I was thinking of Odin because of his Hall of Fame block, Hall of Fame block, Hall of Fame rim protector and Hall of Fame clamps. Any ideas would be appreciated. I definitely think Greg Odin is a very, very good shout at that centre position. So yeah, go ahead and pick him up. The last comment of the day is going to be from Will King. Hey JD, I've just... I've... And the last comment of the other day is going to be from Will King. Hey JD, I just got enough tokens for my first Galaxy Opal. I really want Levine, but with the addition of James Harden, who I'll try and get, I don't know if Levine is worth it. Please help. So yeah, very good point. They are very similar. Uh, they're both shooting guards or point guards. If you are going to go ahead and get that James Harden, then don't lock in for Zach Levine. I would say go ahead and get yourself Josh Smith instead. I think he is fantastic at either the small forward or the powerful position. So that's going to be it for the third video of the day. Hope you guys have enjoyed them all. If you missed any, be sure to go ahead and check them out. As usual, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.